Uh, I'm going to introduce, uh, do a presentation on the Tulip 41 for the, the ultimate intelligence peripheral for HP 41. Um, this project is made, is made by uh, Mendard um, Coopers in uh, Netherlands. So uh, I have a board I will show you after that. And uh, this is pre his presentation that I'm doing in his place. OK, uh, I have more slide than time, so I'm going to skip over <laughs> some of them. Uh, that document, you have it on the, on the drive, so you can look it after that. OK, uh, Tulip, oops, sorry. Tulip is based on uh, works that was started and done by Andrew Minahu in UK and then expanded by Thomas Fange in Sweden. Um, and also he uh, would talk from the HP Museum and software coming from Christoph uh, Gisling, Jean-Francois Garnier and Mike. OK, what it is, uh, it's a ROM emulator for the HP 41 that includes bank switching. It's a QROM ev emulator that's 10-bit ROM, that 10-bit RAM that are simulating ROM. Uh, normally, you hear that as a ML, ML machine, lab uh, machine language development lab. Uh, and it can do EPAX. Uh, it can add uh, user memory. Uh, main memory, expanded memory. Uh, it support, uh, it, it had also peripheral. Uh, it implement the pillbox inside. So you can connect to USB with your computer and running uh, PyILPR or ILPR and directly see uh, all the HPIL device without using an actual HPIL cable. Uh, it has a bus tracer and HPIL scope. So we can see everything that's coming out of the bus and the, the disassemble in real time and the data in real time. So it does all that. Not right now. It, some of it are planned. Some of it works. So we're going to see. So it's based on the, uh, on the AP, uh, RP2040 with the Raspberry Pi Pico version 1. Um, the release will maybe done with Pico version 2. Uh, he's testing this right now, but right now what I have is Pico version 1. Um, yeah, so the, the first implementation that, that was done by Andrew and Thomas was doing bit banging with GPIOs. And what he did is basically use the PIO chip inside to do all the hardware low level stuff. Uh, that was freeing the CPU, both CPU inside, uh, to do the application side. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, also, because of that, um, uh, Thomas decided to uh, uh, to want to this project to support the Blinky, the the HPIR infrared module, but that module was not, there was never a source code release for that. There was no nomos for that, it's come late. And it, a, his work with others were able to completely de uh, disassemble the module, understood how it works, and you have that implementation into the Tulip module. So uh, there's a development board that I have here, I will show you later, uh, that has uh, the bus tracer, uh, everything that's there. And the board will be able to be, uh, you, it's available on the HP forum as a pre-sale. The final, final board will be uh, like an HPIL connector, the size of the HPIL connector, maybe a little bit longer with a USB connector at the end. Uh, but right now it's a dev board, and uh, that's it. That is what it looked like. 
So right now, this is the, this is the interface bus. Uh, you have to have your connector. You have to solder the connector here because it doesn't have connectors for that. So you have to use a, what I use is a single memory board, uh, standard memory. I, I un unsolder it and solder this. Uh, you have to connect the header to, from this to this. You have here the PICO board. The board that uh, Mendert has done is this and this. This is two PCB. You got here the FRAM module. So basically what you have here is you connect that to the 41. Uh, it, ha it transfer all the, 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 the bus information from there here. You can also plug another module here if you want. And from that, all the information is coming to the board. And you can get, if you connect this to a computer, that's a USB, you're going to have five serial ports that will appear on your, on your PC. And then to those five serial ports, you can control the, the unit, see the tracing, and so on. If you do debugging, you're going to have a, a PICO probe here that's connect, and then you have a six serial port that should happen, and then you have also an interface to the, the Mendert application through the PICO probe. So uh, that's the dev board. The finished product will not look like that. It will probably look something like that in the length inside a 3D printer, printed uh, shell, a, mo a module. Again, uh, level shifters uh, from uh, that, that's, the thing here. Oh, the fr sorry, the frame. Oops. Why it's not working? Yeah, the fr sorry, the frame is here. The level shifter is there. You got also the infrared with here. Um, Yeah, you have uh, hardware design. Hull is, is able to trace everything except for the F1 right now. Uh, you, it can, it can, so you have extra, uh, it has an RTC, but you need battery. So either you do an external battery or you have a, right now on the development board, we have a jumper that you can use a battery from the HP41, but uh, I don't know about how it, this wor will work at the end. Uh, it, it, it will support up to 16 megabyte of external flash. That's mean that you will be able to put all the ROM into the flash and then map those ROM into the memory uh, 41 space. Um, it's, it's so right now it's testing for the new Pico Pro, uh, not Pro, but the new Raspberry Pi Pico 2 with this new chip and is hoping to lower power consumption. And since the new one is based on new cores, more faster and more powerful, uh, he's hoping to bring down uh, the power consumption and add more speed and that everything will work best. This is a module. I'm going to go fast on this. The, the 3D printer case, right now they're prototyping this. Uh, challenge, the connector, right now the connector is not supplied. You will have to furnish it to give yours. Um, documentation, the first version has been released. I've read it. Need, there is need to be, some of the things need to be uh, improved, but basically it's correct. How does it work? You have two, po two cores, uh, external flash, many peripherals. You have the PIO. Uh, the cost is about $1 per chip. That's the thing. That's the, the final product will, not, will be very cheap. That's the, the thing is using a standard uh, chip like that, is that they mass produce it so you can reuse it economically. Um, you need an external power consumption, an external power uh, adapter. If you use only the module, you're going to deplete the battery very fast. 
it's not, uh, yeah, it, it, you need a power a bank, external power bank. Well, I'm going to go faster on this. The hardware, that's, that's the kind of line is having several line and the, the, the PIO here and the, the GPIOs and the two cores are taking that information and translating that into uh, interpreting that and uh, taking action based on what's there. How it works, you got a PIO that does a low level then the core one of this, the first CPU is doing the uh, handling of that IOs and uh, uh, processing instructions and uh, implement the peripheral registers and so on. And you got the second one with the support loop where uh, it does anything not uh, real time related, like the user interfaces, the tracing and so on. Uh, we're going to see that later on. The bus tracer, yeah, this is when you do, um, if you do a assembly language or uh, M code, uh, you can, uh, you got an embedded uh, debugger. So you will see all the frame, everything going out. So it's very, from the real hardware. So it's very interesting if when you do that, if you want to understand how it's working. And this is what, on the tracing, this is what you see. Uh, you see the, uh, the sample, that's a sequence number. So you, uh, that's everything that is sequencing is capturing the data. And you got the address, the lines, the different line, the data, and so on. Everything, the happening on the hardware, you see it here. So you can relate the hardware, what's happening on the hardware side, how to inter is interpreting that and the result. And you see here the instruction, the, S the M code instruction being uh, output. It's emulating the, uh, the original uh, 82143A. Um, you have a command line. Through the command line right now, you, it's a serial port. You start a console, a serial application that's going to uh, connect to the serial port. And you configure, you map the ROM through that interface. And then you can save that into FRAM. And then when it's going to power up, it's going to use that configuration by default. Uh, yeah, current status, uh, dev board is in design mode. Hardware has been tested on CX, C, and CL. Uh, I, have, I have the only board available except what he has in. Um, yeah, and right now he's evaluating for the, the second CPU. Uh, in the first version of the firmware, uh, you got a command line interface, you have the SD card, but you're not, it's, n it's able to read it, but it's, it's, not, it's not able to map the ROM from it. It's not at that, uh, that point right now. It's been tested, but it's not, uh, it's been tested separately on this side, but it's, I haven't, the firmware that I have doesn't have it. You have the, HP, the, the HPIL printer and the drive, uh, and the, you can connect that to an emulator and it's going to work. I tried it, it's working perfectly. Um, emulator print, printer, it's not working with a real uh, infrared printer, but it's working with the emulator. Uh, that will come later. That will come later. So extended memory is working today. Uh, this one is working also, the uh, disassembler. Um, yeah, he has a lot of things to do. Uh, flash for loading ROM and mod file, uh, plugging and unplugging that, the EPAX support, QROM support, power management, uh, several things that need to be done. Is uh, yeah. He's planning for by the end of the, the, the I would say that 
end of the year, you may, you will see uh, either a prototype, and I would expect that next year will be beginning of next year uh, full product, first version. The thing is that here, since everything is done in software, it's easy to update. So you just need to update a firmware. You you set the how it works is is that you send a command to the module and it's rebooting as and it becomes a, a drive on your computer. You just drag the new firmware into that drive and when it's there, automatically the, the board is rebooting and it's activating the software and you have upgraded the board. Um, I'm gonna skip things here a bit. Okay. Okay, to have a, a, a contained system, I've used a Raspberry Pi uh, 4B. That's the unit I'm using. This is running Linux, and it's a self-contained computer. On that, I've loaded all the development kit, uh, serial port and interface, application, and everything. So what you're seeing here is basically the user interface of that, and I'm accessing that through uh, VNC with a remote video control. And I can, from my computer, connect to this. It's connected to Ethernet through uh, my computer, and I can do SSH, uh, SFTPs, and VNCs and connect to this. And this is connected to the development board. The, I, will, I cannot show it to you right now, but it was, it's the same as what was shown on the video. So what I have here, I have a terminal. If I do this and I do help, this is all the command that you can enter in, sorry, here into uh, the, uh, the tulip. So if I do a uh, plug, I will have here what, current, what is currently connected. Uh, now, I, if I, st I uh, start a tracer, this is a tracer. If I open, power up the 41, you see in real time all the hardware, the, the sequence at, at, at the left, the, the, the number of capture and everything, the, that, and the, the, all the hardware information, the data coming out of the bus, and the instruction, the, the, the compiler in real time. So if I do enter whatever that I do, uh, it's there. Now, if I, uh, let's see, I start now, uh, uh, Pi Helper. This is, uh, HPIL peripheral emulator that's running on Windows, DOS, and Linux. Not DOS, but Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It's in Python, and uh, I can simulate uh, a scope to see what, er, what is going on on the HPIL side, the printer, and a tape. So if I, uh, I, I power up this and I do catalog two, you see what's happening on the 41 right now, you see it here. Okay, and the printer that you see here and the mass storage, that's coming from the HPIL and those are modules are coming from uh, the uh, Tulip 41 that has automatically been mapped to the 41 world. Okay. Uh, if I do a do, uh, oops, no. I'm seeing uh, there's a one file here, and I to, if I click on the tape, on the tape I have one file, and it's a HP41 file. So I see, if I want to read it, I'm gonna put the uh, program, it's called 
Hello. I'm going to load it into the 41 space. So I'm actually reading as if it, it was a tape. And if I execute it, and I go here, the program says, hello. So what I did is put hello in the alpha side. Did, I did a read, read pro, uh, program. It loaded the, the program from the tape into going through the Tulip 41, 4041 into the 41, and then running it. Uh, that's the program, simple program, but it's just a demo to, to show that it's working. So that's, that's the project. Uh, at the end, we're going to have only a module, a USB side, and uh, if you have, uh, let's say if you use this with the module and a power pack, you can have a solution, battery operation solution that with your 41 that you can go everywhere. So that's basically it. Now we having, unfortunately, I had, uh, I have uh, Mender on Zoom, but his speaker, his microphone is not working, and it's not. I'm gonna try again with him. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Uh, had Hi, finished. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Hold, hold, hold on, you're gonna, everyone. You're not seeing them, but uh, there, are, there are 40 people there, sorry. Okay, great. So if we have question, he can uh, answer. Yeah. If you're using a terminal on the map, connect to the Raspberry Pi, from which you're using a terminal to connect to the Pico, why not just cut the Raspberry Pi out of the loop? Why not? Okay. Uh, well, I can answer that because that was mine ID. It's because uh, I can have directly the Mac connected to it. The reason is that I, had, I want to have a development setup that he can reproduce on his side to, be, to have a reference uh, system. Oh, he's not on Mac. So, 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 and also, I, I wanted to prove that I can run uh, Pi Helper natively on the Raspberry Pi and have a portable solution that can run on PowerPack. Okay. So that there were several things that I want to do at the same time. Okay. <laughs> do you have a question for Mender? I may put everybody to sleep so you don't. <laughs> Yeah. When? Ah, the question. When? Yeah, good one. Um, I hope early, early next year. Uh, but for the development version, the development board, the the, the kit that uh, Sylvain has uh, at the desk, um, uh, the PCBs are on their way to me. So then the next step is to verify them. Uh, put the components on and see if they work, and then uh, then I'll start shipping those. Okay. And an option to buy an assembled module. Uh, assembled modules. Um, I'll after I've assembled uh, a unit, I will do some power measurements uh, with the uh, with the Pico two, um, and then I'll make a decision to uh, go with the with the new. Uh, 23 or 5320 uh, or the um, 2040. And once I've done that, I can uh, can finish the hardware design. I think I have most of the hardware design already for the 2040, uh, but for the 2350, I need to uh, to change quite a quite a few things. Okay, I have a question. Uh, if uh, if I understand correctly. When the module is going to be available, the connector will not be part of this. No, no. Okay. If uh, will it be a, uh, will it be possible for a person to send you a, mo a full module so you can do soldering the connector yourself before sending the module? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, that's that's certainly possible. It it will also make it easier for me to uh, to test the modules. Okay, so for uh, somebody who has who has do do not have soldering skill, he will be able to get if he's sending you a a, a module with a connector, you will be able to do all the assembly on your side. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. So then, what I, what I should ask there is, um, I'm I'm working also with Andrew um, on the possibility to produce uh, module connectors. Okay, that's good news. Uh, but I mean, it's it's very very preliminary, but it's uh, it's it's a bit of a plan, and we think we know in which direction it will go. Uh, we have an idea of the costs. Um, the next thing is to to sort of find out if that's really uh, something that that can be realized. Do you have an idea of the cost of the module, like a ballpark something? <laughs> No, no, the mod, no, not yet, no. Okay. Other question? Yeah. Okay, so when I understand there's going to be SD, uh, the micro card, is that going to be able to use for storage space for programs and, and, and data? Yeah, the uh, the initial idea is to use the uh, micro SD card um, a bit like on the uh, DM41X uh, as a, as a main storage for uh, for ROM files and MOD files. Uh, you can move these into the uh, the flash of the microcontroller and then uh, plug them as modules. Uh, another usage uh, that is something that has already been done is to uh, to create an uh, HPIL device. Uh, in the uh, in the tulip uh, to use the uh, micro SD card as storage, uh, like uh, a tape drive, but then uh, very very small. And uh, the other idea uh, I have is to create uh, a special tulip ROM uh, to be able to uh, directly load uh, raw files uh, from the from the flash card into into memory, and the other way around. Okay. Did, did that, that answer the th question? No, there seems to have no other question. I have a <laughs> ah, sorry. You mentioned that the current draw was still a bit high. Um, is there a cooling requirement? You need vented? Uh, no, no. Cool, cooling is absolutely not uh, not needed. Um, the current uh, current consumption. Um, if I if I do not connect, if I do not use a USB. Um, then I measure a current consumption of around uh, 24 milliamps, so it's uh, it's quite moderate, uh, but it will drain the uh, the calculator's battery very quickly. If you use it as an HPIL module, you'll have it connected to uh, to USB, and it will be powered by USB. So then it will not drain the the battery. But if you use it uh, as as a ROM emulator it's in your calculator, it it will drain the battery. And the other problem is that. Um, I can put uh, the unit in low power mode, but then it will still, in the, with the uh, current microcontroller, it will still use about uh, two and a half milliamps. And that is, that is way too much for the batteries. But that's the price of the Pico and... Yeah, uh, that's, the, um, yeah that's the price of the, of the controller. The, uh, the new controller, the 2350, um, has an overall uh, much better current consumption, even when it's running. Um, and its performance is about twice uh, that of the current one. Um, so I could reduce the clock frequency and, and end up as a, at a much better power consumption. Um, what I still have to sort out is the, uh, is the low power mode. So how low can I power the, uh, the microcontroller when it's not doing anything? Uh, the drawback there is that um, it needs time to to boot. Uh, so when you switch on the calculator, it can start when there is uh, when it switches on. But you want the controller to be instantly available, and that will not be the case. So I need to think about how to how to handle that to to handle the startup time. And also when when to go into low power mode. So when you switch the calculator off, maybe wait one or two minutes and then go into low power mode. And use two uh, power cycles to uh, to allow for for boot. So that's 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 a bit uncertain. 
But I think the good thing is that if you intend to use it as uh, HPIL or if you have a power bank available all the time, then it, it'll work uh, quite nice. And if you switch the, power, the calculator off and, and unplug the module, then, then you're quite okay. Other question? No, that's going to be it. Thanks, Leiter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good conference.